Good evening and welcome to this High Sheriff's Legal Service or Celebration of the Rule of Law. These services have been held almost continuously since Salisbury Cathedral was built and its copy of the Magna Carta was signed in the 1200s. They were originally held at the start of each Assizes session with the dual purpose of blessing visiting circuit judges with wisdom and good judgment in their forthcoming deliberations and as a demonstration to the wider community of the power and majesty of the rule of law. It's always been the High Sheriff's duty to convene and host these events as the figurehead of law and order in the county. That's law as in the judiciary, the magistrates, local government, the police, prisons and by extension the emergency services. And order as in ensuring orderly, safe and sustainable communities. And so in the normal course of events you would now be sitting with 500 others in Salisbury Cathedral witnessing the colourful spectacle of the Lord Lieutenant, the assembled High Sheriffs of the Western Circuit, judges, bishops, service heads and mayors all processing down the aisle in their ceremonial dress in one of Wiltshire's greatest shows of pageantry. But of course it hasn't been a normal year. The first Covid lockdown was imposed the day before I was due to take over as High Sheriff a year ago. My public declaration as Sheriff was cobbled together as an online event overnight. And when Jenny and I celebrated alone in the garden afterwards, it didn't occur to either of us for a moment that a year on I would be handing over to my successor in the same manner. But the year hasn't been wasted, it's just been different. Like the rest of the world, the Shrivelty has learned to use IT to maintain contact with authorities and communities alike. But I'm no Chateau General and staying at home was never an option. So like many other community volunteers, I found innovative ways of working within the COVID rules to maintain vital face-to-face -face contact and morale building visits to the agencies of law and order and to communities coping with the effects of COVID on the ground. Either way, this has given me the opportunity of seeing Wiltshire's civil authorities and uniformed services performing at their very best and Wiltshire communities and charities stepping up to work with them on an unprecedented scale. So don't feel sorry for me, I've had a great operational year. But do spare a thought for my dear wife Jenny who cleared her diary to make headroom for a year of ceremonial engagements which simply didn't happen. And likewise for my under sheriffs and sheriff's chaplain who I couldn't justify including on outside events but who've nevertheless been a great source of support and encouragement throughout the year. Now the theme I chose for my year was One Community and we've certainly lived out that theme this Covid year. Crisis breeds opportunities they say and this is a year that has seen great strides forward in terms of innovation in working practices and in terms of a surge in community spirit. So putting this celebration together whilst recognising the challenges Covid has brought us we also want to draw out the lessons that this experience has taught us and to suggest what the positive legacy of this life-changing year will be going forward. To that end this celebration like Caesar's Gaul is divided into three parts. First we'll have the rule of law with the Lord Chancellor opening the batting from a national perspective and the Chief Constable following through uh, by looking at how things have panned out across Wiltshire this year. And then I'll return to my theme of communities with the help of my colleagues from the Wiltshire Community Foundation and my hugely supportive High Sheriff's Chaplain. And finally Her Majesty's Lord Lieutenant 
will draw my year metaphorically to a close and will look forward to that of my successor, Sir Charles Hobhouse, who will conclude by making his public declaration as the new High Sheriff of Wiltshire. So, over to the Right Honourable Robert Buckland, Secretary of State for Justice, Lord Chancellor of Great Britain, Custodian of the Great Seal of the Realm, and Member of Parliament for South Swindon. I am really pleased to be able to participate in this celebration of the rule of law, not just as the responsible cabinet minister, but as a Swindon MP as well. And I'd like to begin by thanking the High Sheriff, Major General Truluck, for inviting me and for his very hard work during what has been a difficult year. I know that your efforts, particularly in using technology to continue reaching out to the community despite COVID-19, have been a huge help locally during your term of office. When I took my oath of office as Lord Chancellor some 19 months ago, I swore to be a champion for the rule of law, for public accountability, for judicial independence, for legal clarity, for effective courts, for equality before the law, and access to justice for all people. These principles are the foundations of a well-functioning justice system like ours. They act as guardians of fairness and freedom in a modern and mature democracy, underpinning both community cohesion and economic success in our country. It might have been convenient during a global pandemic simply to suspend justice altogether, my view was that we had to hold steadfast to our principles and to ensure that justice could continue to be done because in many instances, frankly, it cannot wait. We have hired extra staff and installed plexiglass screens to keep people safe where hearings continue to take place in person and have built on our court modernisation programme with unprecedented innovation and investment to enable other hearings to happen remotely. This meant huge changes to the day-to-day -day operation of our courts and I pay warm tribute to those who work in and preside over them, as well as those who practice in and use them, including our local courts at Swindon and Salisbury, for example, for their patience and resilience in putting necessary changes in place and making them work, whilst at the same time maintaining the principles of transparent and open justice. The transition was not easy for any one person or group, but we at the Ministry of Justice were particularly mindful of the dangers it posed to vulnerable court users. So we put in place an action plan to ensure that they were not precluded from accessing justice or discriminated against in any way. And we were also determined to support the not-for-profit advice sector with emergency funding contributing to their efforts to adapt to new and different ways of working to continue to help people to access justice wherever possible. The spirit of collaboration right across the system meant that we were able to resume jury trials before any other comparable jurisdiction in the world. We were able to increase the number of remote hearings from a standing start in March of last year to over 22,000 per week now and to be in a position where we are completing cases at roughly pre-pandemic levels. For example, the Crown Courts are once again disposing of about 2,000 cases every week. But as we look beyond the pandemic, inevitable challenges do remain. There are currently historic levels of cases waiting to be heard in the criminal courts, but by making 60 extra Nightingale courtrooms available, we are determined to get justice done as quickly as possible. And while we react to the residual effects of the pandemic, it's important to realise that there are also opportunities to learn lessons that can improve justice for future generations. This applies equally to other parts of the justice system, where rehabilitative and supervisory activity have all been enhanced by the necessity to innovate. And let me say how grateful I am to the staff and the volunteers involved locally in the work of prisons and the probation service, including those at HMP Earlstoke. 
In the months and years ahead, we at the Ministry of Justice will be looking at how we can build upon recent innovations without losing the essence of the system, so that as we continue to modernise justice, it remains open and inclusive to everyone. Our system has evolved in this way over the centuries to put itself right at the heart of our society's success and, as the Lord Chancellor, I have a key role in ensuring that our constitutional arrangements remain finely tuned to serve the needs of the people in our country. And in the coming months I will be saying a lot more about this. As the rule of law's champion in government, I will continue to work in partnership with colleagues right across the system to hold true to the underlying principles of justice. And I can't, I can't think of a better way, frankly, than to celebrate the crucial role of the rule of law in the success of our country. In closing, let me say how pleased I am to welcome the new High Sheriff. I wish you well for what we all hope will be a better year ahead and I look forward to working closely with you in the interests of our local communities. Thank you. Hello, I'm Chief Constable Pierre Pritchard of Workshire Police. The role of policing in society is to protect, to prevent crime and to keep people safe. In 1829, Sir Robert Peel introduced the Peelian Principles, one of which states, the public are the police and the police are the public, enshrining the very notion of policing with consent. This is so important, never more so than when policing through crisis, as in the last 12 months. People through crisis experience all manner of emotions, from fear to heightened concern, and some become more susceptible to the risks that this may pose. So working through the pandemic of the last 12 months, we have played our part in policing society alongside partners. As the chair of our local resilience forum, I bring our statutory and voluntary partners together to make sure that we both plan for and then respond to major incidents and emergencies. We have a shared ambition to safeguard and protect our communities. These relationships are strong and deep, uh, have been well tested both through the Novichok incidents of 2018 in Salisbury and Amesbury, right through to the pandemic of the last 12 months. We've taken the learning of all those approaches, the learning such as making sure that we form an alliance, we develop and share our information and our intelligence, and we work together to provide guidance and information to the public. We have a can-do attitude working together to safeguard. So in policing, my role as the Chief Constable is to set the policing style and tone. Over this last 12 months, I've asked my officers and staff to be fair, to police with common sense, to be robust when necessary, but to police with consistency. I explained the very notion that we use in forensic science, the analogy that every contact leaves a trace. And in this regard, every interaction that we have with the member of the public may lead to their trust and confidence being improved or eroded absolutely vital back to the notion of policing with consent. So this year we faced emergency regulations. That's placed limited time for me to train and equip my officers and staff to interpret guidance and legislation. The public have faced many challenges and confusion between the difference of the two. What does local mean when exercising? What does exercise mean? But one thing for sure, travelling from Luton to Wiltshire to buy a McDonald's meal which is one of the examples we saw over the last 12 months, is most certainly not a reasonable excuse to leave your home. So we learn quickly, providing guidance to our staff. I've made sure my officers and staff are protected, both in the operational context, but also whilst policing and working across our estate. The majority of the public have been absolutely fantastic. They've been compliant and exceptional over the last 12 months, but of course, regrettably, the minority have pushed boundaries some seeking to use COVID to weaponise against my officers and staff in coughing, spitting and assaulting and attacking my officers trying to keep people safe. We've received now over 10,000 reports through the 101 and through our website system, people reporting concerns and potential COVID violations. We've spoken to thousands of people explaining the rules and encouraging people to follow them. But where necessary, we've had to step into the enforcement space now issuing 750 tickets to members of the community in breach of COVID regulation, 
we've played our part to protect people and to protect the NHS. We've policed through three lockdowns, through many protests, mostly peaceful gatherings, and we've continued to deliver the 24-7 normal core policing business. So it's clear crime and demand has changed. We've seen a greater experience of mental ill health in our communities and some of the hidden harm, hidden crimes such as cybercrime and domestic abuse has really prevailed. It's really important that we've continued to listen to our communities so we've housed and staged many virtual community forums including those with our independent advisory groups and with some of our more diverse communities to really listen to their experiences such that we can respond appropriately. So in policing we wear many different hats we're public role models, we're helpers, we're supporters. Where we need to be, we're law enforcers to ensure that we play our part in the criminal justice system. We respond professionally to emergencies, we listen and we help people in their moments of need. But we must all remember, whilst wearing a uniform, we're also human, we have feelings and we have emotions ourselves. So my professional observations of the last 12 months, policing will only succeed it manages complexity with common sense and great judgment. The consent, the trust and the public is vital for us to play our part in society but that, that trust must be earned, it must be nurtured and it must be valued, it is not given. Covid has certainly presented a significant opportunity for us now and we must continue to play our part in the fabric of helping a community thrive and policing is vital in that. So I believe that over the last 12 months we've taken great steps forward. I set the vision for our force to be an outstanding service trusted by the community and I believe that the way that we've policed over the last 12 months has taken us and our force one step closer to that. I'm incredibly proud of each of my officers, staff and all the volunteers that have helped us. Thank you. Well, now a change of dress for a change of tempo and change of subject as we talk about Wiltshire communities, the people who've been most affected by coronavirus and its successive lockdowns. And as it turned out this year, it was particularly fortuitous that I am also the chairman of Wiltshire Community Foundation and that that was, of course, the uh, charity that I adopted for my year. Now, for those of you who don't know, Wiltshire Community Foundation acts as a community hub for the county, uh, including Swindon, raising money from people who care uh, and redistributing it to causes that matter which this year, of course, meant primarily communities suffering from the effects of COVID. And in this respect, it's been a real pleasure, I have to say, working with the Foundation's two magnificent chief executives, Fiona Oliver and Vicky Hickey. Together, we have encountered some very sad and moving moments in this COVID year, but we've also had great fun as we've blended the roles of High Sheriff and Wiltshire Community Foundation until they're almost seamless uh, this year, as you'll see. A massive thank you to Ashley Truluck for all that he's done as High Sheriff for Wiltshire and East Swindon in, throughout 2020 and into 2021. What a year it's been. Um, he's been an incredible hands-on support to many of the community groups that have been battling on and doing their best for people in need across the county. We've seen him uh, provide hands-on support. He's been a volunteer at the vaccination centre. He's helped to deliver laptops um, to people who need them. He's helped coordinate delivery of hot food to community groups. And all of this in a year where everything that he'd planned um, to do, and it was all extremely well planned back in uh, 2019, 2020 has, was all cancelled because of coronavirus, but he's found a way to reach out to the voluntary sector and provide them with a great deal of support. And, you know, I think in such a challenging year um, for so many groups, just receiving that phone call from the High Sheriff um, to say thank you or to say you've received the High Sheriff Award, um, I think it's been hugely uplifting and motivational for so many in the county. And, you know, that bit of recognition can just go such a long way. Absolutely. And we've seen some incredibly heartwarming responses to those calls. But I think one of the funniest things that we heard was where 
actually had to really try and persuade a community group that he was the high sheriff. And I think it took him a number of calls before they would actually believe that it was the high sheriff ringing to offer his uh, thanks and to offer help and support if it was needed. So it's been a phenomenal year that he's he's delivered on behalf of Wiltshire and Swindon. So we would like to say a very large thank you from us all at Wiltshire Community Foundation and behalf of everybody in the voluntary sector across the county for all he's done to raise profile for them and to give them that, you know, extra motivation and thanks for all that they're doing. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks, Ashley. we've been able to support 190 vulnerable young people from Swindon and Wiltshire through these very challenging times. We've been providing online mentoring, one-to-one -one support. Grants have meant that we've been able to keep more in touch with our volunteers, offering them remote working facilities and helping people who perhaps might have been suffering mentally. We've also got a lovely cool server room now, which has got an air conditioning unit, which means the life of the equipment will be prolonged. That we as trustees could continue to provide a vital service of speech and language to all of our young people with Down syndrome in the Swindon and surrounding areas. The grant has been used to purchase large amounts of PPE, which is allowing us to continue to deliver care to the vulnerable children that we look after within the family home. We have 116 volunteers actively working in the community, supporting the isolating and the vulnerable members of our community. And in total, we've done over 1,500 uh, tasks. So a huge thank you to the Wiltshire Community Foundation for the £5,000 they've just donated for our Hospice at Home team. This will provide 250 hours of care from our carers, looking after people during the day and at night. Thanks to you, we've been able to help hundreds of vulnerable individuals and families. More than 5,000 free meals distributed three times a week, 40 computers recycled and upgraded so children can do their work at home. And all these great deeds were funded from money generously donated uh, over the years into Wiltshire Community Foundation's endowment fund and in this year particularly from money raised for the Wiltshire and Swindon coronavirus crisis appeal uh, which raised over a million pounds. So putting those two together uh, the foundation has managed to distribute well over two million pounds to Wiltshire communities in need this year. A, a great, great effort. So I couldn't conclude this section uh, without thanking the fantastic team at Wiltshire Community Foundation, both trustees and staff, and also, in turn, uh, the wonderful generosity of the caring people of Wiltshire who have contributed uh, so much to keeping Wiltshire communities afloat this year. I'd like to thank you for the grant that we've received a big thank you from everybody here at the Youth Adventure Trust to the Wiltshire Community Foundation. Thank you so much, Wiltshire Community Foundation. I want to say a massive thank you from Julius House Children's Hospice. Uh, we just want to say a big thank you to the Wiltshire Community Foundation. So it's a huge thank you to all those at the Wiltshire Community Foundation and all the funders and supporters who make those grants possible. And thank you for your friendship. It's your support that's mattered. Well, I think those video clips say it all, don't they? It's a small wonder, that, therefore, that the Foundation was presented with the prestigious uh, Pride of Wiltshire Award at the Wiltshire Life Ceremony uh, last week. But the real stars are the unsung heroes out there working, volunteering in the communities. And one of the great things of the year for me has been presenting over 50 High Sheriff Awards to such people. Uh, over the year and seeing the hugely positive effect that a simple but sincere thank you can have on volunteers. Thank you very much. We're very grateful indeed and I'm, it's a recognition for all my volunteers. I'm really pleased to be here today to support the Saffron Takeaway who've done some fantastic work uh, in the community here in Salisbury. Yeah, and it's, it's nice to be recognised as well, you know, because it has been a lot of hard work for everybody. Thank everybody you, benefits. everybody, for, you know, for everything you've done. You've all been part.
different when we learned Wiltshire's new High Sheriff was Ashley Truluck. The virtual swearing in was a first in tribal history, but carried more viewers than could have been imagined. That set both the pace and the tone for a year that saw the best of a county that was not prepared to be dominated by the COVID-19 pandemic. My task as chaplain was simple, to ensure the High Sheriff was supported, surrounded and protected by prayer each day of the year of office. The planned support to the Sheriff through attending a whirlwind of events throughout Wiltshire was necessarily curtailed, as we did all that we could to protect our vulnerable residents and our wonderful National Health Service. Throughout the first lockdown, we realised how special our communities are, neighbours really looking out for and caring for their neighbours. VE Day in May 2020 in my neighbourhood saw pavement side tables with cucumber sandwiches and cupcakes and people socially distanced in conversation with both friends and strangers. Throughout this tragic period of modern history, the importance of community, recognising what binds us together rather than the differences that separate us, has produced in Wiltshire a resilience and a commitment to rediscover ways that we can become stronger together. The values that bring the needs of those more vulnerable than ourselves to the front of the queue. The testing of the human spirit, especially in parents having to work from home as well as homeschool their children. The reliance by all of us upon the services that form the essential cement mortar in the structure and fabric of our society. Yes, the emergency services who have been outstanding, but also the care workers, postal workers, refuse collectors, supermarket staff and the drivers who have been transporting essential people and goods throughout. Then we recognise the hidden befrienders, helping combat isolation and loneliness. Amongst all this, I'm proud to be part of the umbrella of faith communities who have held this year past, not only in prayer, but also with action. Ministers, collecting and delivering prescriptions, faith communities providing meals for the vulnerable, the homeless and for the key workers, supporting the other care agencies in so many ways and working together, creeds and culture blending as we stand shoulder to shoulder to make that difference. And finally, to end this shrival year in celebrating the best of our extraordinary achievements, to see our Cathedral Church here in Salisbury open its doors in partnership with our NHS, to provide a safe and secure service to vaccinate thousands of Wiltshire residents. Our 800-year-old cathedral doing what it always stands for, that peace and love and hope will be realised and health and healing of the body and the soul that is available to us all. So, Ashley's shrival year ends with an enormous sense of achievement, earning our place in history and surely the lessons learned must be our legacy for those who will follow. Wiltshire people 
have the resilience and the commitment to make a difference. Not for me, nor for my family, but for us all and those whom we share this county with. And for that, I give thanks to God. What a lineup! The Lord Chancellor, Chief Constable, Archdeacon Jeans, and friends. This is really a tribute to Ashley and Jenny, albeit under the guise of the rule of law celebration. Ashley's dual role as High Sheriff and Chairman of the Community Foundation, which embraced the coronavirus appeal, has been more than effective. It has been extraordinary. Your work, Ashley, along with both councils and the scores of volunteers, has meant that Wiltshire and Swindon have risen to the challenge of three lockdowns with amazing fortitude and steadfastness. Thank you for all you have done for the county, and I do hope you've enjoyed it. I rather think you have. I know the NHS has done incredible work and gets rightful thanks, but I do think Ashley got it right this year when he went out of his way to acknowledge and embrace lots of sections of society who have had a tough year too. Parents doing homeschooling, patient children, lonely people, people with money and job worries, minority groups, and countless charities, both established and new. This has been hugely appreciated. I have much enjoyed working with you, and we had some highlights. A couple of royal visits, when Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Cornwall came to Swindon Fire Headquarters and met ambulance crew from Great Western Hospital, all working together. And we were lucky indeed that their Royal Highnesses, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall, just managed to sneak in a heavily restricted, no singing service at the end of December at Salisbury Cathedral, celebrating 800 years since its inception in 1220. And of course, Broad Chalk Community Hub, which you took me around, and the new pub, all of which you helped to establish. Recently, the Lieutenancy joined the Archbishop of Canterbury on a webinar. If, he advised, we wanted to help or be involved with the pandemic, go micro, he said. Find something small and do it well. Ashley, I think it would be fair to say, has gone macro and everything he's done, he's done fantastically well. I'm only sorry we didn't get to see more of Jenny as in a normal Shrieval year, but thank you, Jenny, for your support. My thanks also, and a note of appreciation to David Lewis for his superb stewardship for many years as retiring under sheriff and to welcome Christopher Bromfield. Lots of work goes on behind the scenes and David, it has been a pleasure knowing you too. Let's keep in touch. Ashley, thank you for your professionalism, your lightness of touch, your success at the Community Foundation and for looking most elegant in your britches. You have not only been good for the Shrievalty, but really good for Wiltshire too. Now it's my pleasure to welcome our new High Sheriff, Sir Charles Hophouse, and I really look forward to lots of joint ventures with you and Annette. Thank you so much. And now to my final act as uh, High Sheriff, handing over my sword office to my successor, Sir Charles Hophouse, who I've got to know and like enormously these last six months. And so I can confidently say that he will make a splendid High Sheriff who will bring a whole new dimension to the role, which is, of course, the great strength of annual appointments. We'll also be marking in this final section the retirement of David Lewis, to whom the Lord Lieutenant has already paid a very fitting tribute, which I wholeheartedly endorse, with my personal thanks for his friendship and support these past 12 months. His successor will be another lawyer, Christopher Bromfield, who many of you will know, who served for many years as trustee of the Wiltshire Community Foundation and so already knows the county very well.
Sir Charles Hoppas, you have received from Her Majesty's Privy Council a warrant of your appointment as High Sheriff of the Bailiwick of Wiltshire, which incorporates the rural county of Wiltshire and the borough of Swindon for the Shrevel year 2021-22. It is now timely for you to read the declaration required by section seven of the Sheriff's Act 1887, which you will sign today before Richard Traher, Esquire, in his capacity as a justice of the peace of this county. Thank you. I now make my public declaration as the High Sheriff of Wiltshire. I, Charles John Spinney Hophouse of Monkton Farley in the county of Wiltshire do solemnly declare that, that I will well and truly serve the Queen's Majesty in the office of High Sheriff of the county of Wiltshire and promote Her Majesty's profit in all things that belong to my office as far as I legally can or may. I will preserve the Queen's rights and all that belong to the Crown and I will process all the Queen's writs according to the best of my skill and knowledge. I will do right as well to poor as to rich, as in all things pertaining to my office. I will do no wrong to any person for any gift, reward, promise, nor for favour, and I will treat all people equally, respecting the differences and diversity of our communities. I will support and encourage all who give their time, skills and commitment for the benefit of others. I will lay aside all private prejudices and political interests. I will promote the peace, well-being and prosperity of this county and all its people. I will disturb no person's right and will truly and faithfully support the judiciary and all who maintain the Queen's peace who administer justice and who protect and support their fellow citizens. I will uphold the ancient office of High Sheriff with selflessness, integrity and leadership. I will truly and diligently uphold the good laws and statutes of this realm and in all things well and truly behave myself in my office for the honor of the queen and the good of her subjects and discharge my obligations according to the best of my skill and power. And I solemnly declare that the contents of this my declaration are true. I will now sign. I, Richard Traher, a justice of the peace, confirm that I have witnessed Sir Charles sign the declaration document. I, Ian Gibbons, clerk to the Lieutenancy, confirm that I have witnessed Sir Charles sign the declaration document. Hi Sheriff, may I congratulate you on your appointment and assumption to the ancient and honourable office in the service of the Queen and I hereby present you with your sword of office. Thank you very much, Ashley. Safely received. And also your badge of office. Miraculously, also <laughs> received. I formally thank you for my court sword and badge of office and adopt them forthwith. Well done. <laughs> we now come to the part of the ceremony where uh, we retire one under sheriff and appoint another. The Lord Lieutenant and I have already said uh, a fitting tribute to David. I wonder whether you would uh, what, wish to say a few words as you stand down after nearly 10 years. I just like to thank everyone for their kindness during my period of being an under sheriff. It's been a great pleasure and an honor. I've got, I've got around the county and I've got to know parts of the county that I've never really been to before even though some parts were two hours away from where I lived. So it's very enjoyable. And I wish my success for every success. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Um, we all wish you the very, very best in your retirement. Okay. So it is
it is now my duty to appoint the under sheriff for the year. So Christopher Bromfield, and as much as you have agreed to act as under sheriff of Wiltshire for the year 2021-22, I will now sign the relevant document and I invite you to do likewise. I accept in front of the assembled witnesses and will discharge my duties to the best of my abilities. And I will now sign the declaration. So that uh, concludes all the formalities. And now it is my chance to say a few words. And of course, I can't possibly start without mentioning my predecessor, Major General Ashley Truluck, who has had to cope with a quite unprecedented year, completely off piste. He was organized for this probably at least a year in advance. I think he would have been high sheriff many years ago. He was so organized in his military manner and he had to throw the whole thing in the bin and literally zoom his way through the year, which is indeed exactly what he did. Uh, he would say himself, he was quite fortuitous that he happens to be the chairman of the Wiltshire Community Foundation at this moment and was last year. So he had a, a small prop or head start to help him along the way. He certainly had a bit of help uh, from IT in the background, I can assure you. He won't admit to that straight away, but he, he certainly did. Um, and he had the support, of course, of Jenny, who missed out on a great deal of the, the fun side of visits. But uh, I can clearly say that I didn't hear one single word of complaint or moan from either of them. They just cracked on, got on with it, did the job as best they could, and they've been a credit to all of us. So well done, Ashley. Uh, I know you were particularly proud that the uh, Community Foundation got an award uh, from Wiltshire Life this year, which is uh, in recognition of all the work that they do. And indeed, without them, it would have been a pretty tricky year. I'm sure you'd say that one. So all, all well done to you. Congratulations on a great year under quite extraordinary circumstances. And that's fantastic. Well done. And I could have said a lot more, but I've been pretty, pretty well behaved so far. That brings me on to my year, uh, a new year, a new chapter, a new chance. Um, my theme will be uh, mental health, particularly that affecting the young, but basically mental health and helping those uh, play their part in all the way through life, from education and then later in the community. Uh, mental health people quite often can be trapped in a bubble and if we don't understand them better, it's much harder for them in later life. And furthermore, if we isolate them in our community, it means that we ourselves who are perhaps more fortunate than them are not really aware of what they have to contend with. And therefore it just benefits all round if we can involve them far more. And that would be my main theme. I happen to be very lucky to live on a farm right on the west of Wiltshire. And it's very topical at the moment, the environment. So I hope to also, as a, as a subsidiary for a theme, uh, bring in the environment and wildlife conservation. And because I happen to live on a farm, I'm well placed, I hope, to do that. So without further ado, I would just like to say I look forward later in the summer to meeting as many of you as possible, to getting around the county, to meeting and finding places I didn't know about, as well as places I already know. And I can't wait, but we'll have to be just a little bit more patient and hopefully I'll have a little bit of luck on my side. So thank you very much for all for attending. And that concludes our ceremony. We'll just have a quick drink as is customary as started by my predecessor at this point. I'll stand there. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>